sure if you see me in the comments. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Anshul. So welcome to my very first live stream of an English lesson. If you don't know me yet, my name is Miranda and I am an English teacher. I'm originally from California um, and I've been living and working in Austria for most of my adult life, teaching adults in the international community. I love my job and this YouTube channel is my hobby. It is my way to make English accessible to people around the world who maybe have the will, but not the resources or the time to enroll in regular English courses. So I hope you find it helpful. It's a lot of fun for me. And I chose the first topic, listening skills, um, because I have already received quite a few questions about it. But um, this live stream isn't about me, it's about you. So maybe you can start by telling us where you are and what time it is, because I know it was difficult to plan a time that would be convenient for everybody. And it can give me an idea of how I can plan the next live session if you just let me know where you are and the time. Okay, so let's get started. I have so much prepared for you today. The topic is listening and I'm going to be asking you a few questions. So I'd like you to interact in the comments. Um, later on, I'm going to do a short lesson on pronunciation and just talk about the reasons why listening can sometimes be difficult, um, especially when listening to native speakers or fluent English speakers. And then later on in the lesson, I have a lot of resources for you um, that you can use to develop your listening skills. Okay. So my first question for you is, why are listening skills important? More specifically, why are listening skills important to you in your life? So obviously listening skills are important because we need to understand spoken English. We need to, to be able to listen to radio programs, um, spoken English. If we work in English, it's not enough just to read and write. Although some jobs, of course, you have to write reports and understand written English, but eventually you'll come across a situation where it's also necessary to understand spoken English or understand listening texts in English. So I'm curious why this is important to you. So you can also let us know in the comments. I'll um, answer questions at the end as well. I've left time for that. So let's get started. Okay. Why is it difficult to understand English speakers? Well, English is not a phonetic language. That's one reason why people find it really difficult to understand what is being spoken to them. Sometimes they've learned English for many years at school and then they go out into the world and they realize they don't understand people because they don't speak clearly. When I say that English is not a phonetic language, this means that the spelling or the written words in English are not the same as how they are pronounced or spoken. And it's not just a matter of spelling. So it's not just the words are spelled differently than they're pronounced. It's also a matter of pronunciation and intonation. So in English, we have different rules you can learn that have to do with word stress. So how we pronounce individual words and also sentence stressed. So maybe you've noticed that English speakers mumble. So they don't speak clearly. Half of the sentence is clear, but many words get swallowed. It's like they're swallowing their words. And there's actually a rule to this that I wanna talk about a little bit at the beginning of this session. And then I eventually would like to talk to you about how you can actually train this so that your ears can get used to it and recognize these patterns in the language. Okay. So, lesson number one prepared for you. Here we have noun and verb pairs. So noun and verb pairs are simply nouns that are the same as a noun and a verb. So each word has syllables. And 
noun and a verb. So every word in English is made up of syllables. A syllable is just a sound. So here we have progress. Okay, it has two syllables. Progress. All right. The verb is the same word. Progress. So if you speak like a robot, they're the same, right? Progress, progress, robotic. But English speakers are not robots. We don't speak like robots. So there's a certain pattern that is true for all two syllable noun verb pairs. This is just one rule you can learn. So if it's a noun, we say progress. The stress is on the first syllable. Progress. You can repeat it if you want. Progress. Yeah, you notice the first syllable is louder and the second syllable is weaker. That's almost more important than which is loud is which is weak because it's the weak syllables that get swallowed. Okay, so progress. And then you can guess the verb is progress. So the syllable is on the second, the stress is on the second syllable. Okay, and this is true for all, these are just three examples I took. So you want your English to progress. Are you making progress? Okay. The next one is a noun. So how do we pronounce it? Convert. A convert is a person who changed their religion. Okay. A convert. To convert. It's on the second syllable, the same. So I can mark this for you, it's just so you can remember. Progress, progress, convert, convert, okay? An increase, everyone wants an increase to their salary. They want to increase their productivity. Okay, this is just one rule. And there are several rules that we're not gonna go over all of them today, but the first step is to be aware of this rule. And to notice when you learn a new word, to also learn the pronunciation and the intonation. So how it's pronounced, how you speak it, and where the stress is. You can do this with certain word families, maybe you've noticed. So if we're robots, yeah, this is photograph, photographic, photography, right? All syllables the same, but that's not how we speak. You have to emphasize the correct syllables or native speakers and English speakers will have a difficulty understanding what you mean. Okay, so we'll practice with this word family. The first one is photograph. Oops, sorry, made a mistake. Photograph, photograph, first syllable. Okay, so let's see the second one. Can you guess where it is? I'll say it and you try to guess. So photographic, four syllables. Photographic, photographic. So the rule usually depends on the ending. So here it's, be, if it ends in ick, then it's the, the syllable before the ending is um, stressed. And then the last one, also four syllables, photography. Photography. So if you like learning pronunciation, you can look up on an online dictionary different word families, for example, and then just notice the intonation and you can practice yourself. Okay. So lesson number two. Let me just check the comments for a second. See that everyone's with me. Good. Okay. Great comments. Okay, and if someone asks a question that I can't answer spontaneously, you can help each other, okay? Someone asks, for example, what does progress mean? What is, okay, if you know progress, to progress is the verb of progress. So yeah, use a dictionary or you can help each other out. Good, okay, another aspect of English pronunciation that is vital to learning and practicing your pronunciation and listening skills is that English is, a, it, we pronounce the content words. So if you have a sentence, now we're talking about sentence stress. So if you have a sentence, the words in the sentence that are con, that have content just means they're important. 
For example, the nouns, the verbs, the adjectives, and the adverbs are the verbs, are the words that are pronounced strongly. Okay, so now we're not talking about the, sen the word stress, we're talking about the whole sentence stress. So if you have a word, the nouns, verbs, adjectives, the important words are stressed. That's kind of easy to remember and quite logical. But the hard part about this rule is that the grammar words, all the grammar words are weak. So these are the words that get swallowed. These are the words that become contractions. Contraction just means shorten, like cannot becomes can't, or is not becomes isn't. Contractions are part of English grammar. It's correct to use contractions in spoken English or informal English. Um, but if you take it one step further, speakers change the contractions into reductions. Reductions are not considered good grammar, but we use them when we speak. So these are the articles, prepositions, auxiliary verbs, and pronouns of the sentences. They get reduced to something completely different that doesn't even sound like English words anymore. Here, I have some examples for you. So the first one, some of you may know, I am going to. So if it's a contraction, it would be I'm going to. That's correct English. It's just contracted. If you say I'm gonna, this is considered slang, but it's so common that you hear it all the time. It's not bad English, it's just fast spoken English. Sometimes you even hear people say I'ma instead of I'm going to, I'ma. I'ma see you tomorrow. I'ma do it later. So this is very lazy, sloppy English. I admit I don't recommend that you use this type of reduction, but for listening practice, it's good just to be aware of it. Some other examples. I have got to go becomes I gotta go. I should have known, I should have known. So especially these grammatical structures become reduced and make it difficult to understand. But with training, you can learn it. So this is true for all the modal verbs. I should have known, he must have been here, I would have done it, um, he might have told you. So all of these become reduced. And then finally, if you listen to music, the word ain't crops up very often. Ain't is just a universal negative form of to be. I'm not, you aren't, she isn't, for example. People often use ain't, especially in music. So in popular music, they use ain't. So if you want to practice your listening skills with music, then you need to know this word. Okay, so that's just my little pronunciation lesson to make it a little bit easier so that you're aware of these different forms. Okay, so my first question for you, how can we practice listening? So think of yourself in your daily life, what can you do to practice listening? Give me your ideas. And then I want to go through it and talk about the pros and cons of all these practices. Okay, no ideas, huh? How can we practice listening? Let's go over a few of the options that people do. The first one, watching series and films in English. Good, what are the pros of this? The pros, of course, you can do this from home in a relaxing atmosphere. Um, it's fun, even in your own language, so you don't feel like you're doing some homework or studying. You're just watching a series, which is fun anyway. And if you do it in English, then you're killing two birds with one stone. You're learning and you're enjoying yourself. 
Um, of course, this is fun. It's normally a natural kind of English dialogues, people speaking to each other. So there's nothing wrong with watching series and films. What are some of the cons? Well, so one thing I can think of is um, I wouldn't consider this super effective. I think there are more effective ways to study listening because when you watch a series or a film, if you think about it, a lot of the time, well, depending on the film, a lot of the time is taken up with action or just walking or talking or just doing something where they're not actually speaking. So yes, it's good. There's nothing wrong with it, but um, it could be a more effective, there could be a more effective way to practice your listening skills. And the second con is that it's very passive, right? So you're taking it in, but you're not forced to produce anything from what you've learned. You can take notes and you can, you know, look them up in the dictionary or something, but still it's quite passive knowledge. So it's good, you should do it, but maybe um, we can talk about ways to make it more effective so that it also influences your speaking and pronunciation and production of the language. Okay. I also want to point out if you watch something on TV or if you have a film or something that you enjoy, make sure that it's right for your level because if it's too difficult to understand, it's counterproductive. If you have to look up 25 words, then it's probably overwhelming and too much. So try to find something that's good for your level and you should be able to understand 70, 80% of the content without having to look anything up in the dictionary. Okay, so something that I think contains more input than TVs and TV shows and films are podcasts. So podcasts are 100% audio. This is why I like them in terms of studying because it's just audio. And because you don't have that visual, although maybe it may not be as fun to watch or to listen to podcasts because you only have audio, it makes you have to concentrate harder on the actual listening. So this to me is a pro. So you can also find so many podcasts on various topics once you've found something that's challenging for you or if you found a podcast that um, broadcasts topics that are interesting to you, this is ideal. And you don't need to listen for an hour. You can listen to 10 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever is challenging for you. You can write down vocabulary or re-listen to the podcasts and you can learn a lot that way. So I do have a video of podcast recommendations and I'm gonna give you some more today at the end of the lesson. Um, let's talk about the cons. What's wrong with podcasts? Well, again, like the TV shows, it's passive, right? You just listen and say, good, I'm listening to English. You're not doing anything with it. So we're gonna talk about that too, how to activate your listening skills. Okay, and the last one, the pros and cons of music. Okay, so for music, everyone loves music. <laughs> How can anyone not love music? You could dance to the music while learning. You can hear the music in a melodious way. You can hear the English as a harmony. It's fun. You can sing along. You can memorize the tune. If the song gets stuck in your head, it forces you to use the lyrics again. So there's so many positive aspects to using songs to learn English. Some of the cons, well, believe it or not, a lot of musicians use bad grammar. Yeah, they do. Why do they do this? They do this for several reasons. So one, depending on the music, it could be slang that they're using, which isn't necessarily bad English. I mean, there are times you may need slang. But another thing they do is they change the grammar to fit the rhythm of the music. So maybe they just need one syllable and not two syllables in their 
line in their song. And so they don't say he doesn't, they say he don't. You've probably heard it before. So sometimes they change the grammar and use incorrect constructions. That's one reason why it might not be so ideal. And another thing is often they change the pronunciation, the intonation, if it fits better with the beat of the music. So usually music is fine and lyrics are very clear. It's a great way to learn. Just keep in mind that if you hear a word and maybe you think the intonation is wrong, then maybe you're right. Maybe it is wrong. So those are the pros and cons of learning through songs. Okay, so how are some ways that you can activate these different ways to learn that we were just talking about? How can you be an active listener? Say you're watching your favorite TV show in English or you're listening to your favorite podcast. What can you do to activate this knowledge? One idea that I recommend to my students, you can do this especially with TED Talks or any kind of listening activity where you have access to a transcript, which I'm going to give you a little bit later on. I'll show you where you can find that. Um, I know you can't always find a transcript to a TV show, but you can find certain transcripts online, either um, exam preparation sites or on BBC. They also have um, radio programs with the transcript. And one way to practice your listening using that, I'll show you one that I printed out. So this is just one page that I print, printed out. It's just a random TED Talk. Okay, just a random TED talk. I didn't even watch it. And what I'd like you to do with your text, okay, you have it, everything written down. And remember when I was talking about the content words being stressed in the sentence? I want you to read the transcript before watching, before listening, and to imagine which words in the sentence are stressed. So, for example, so when I was first learning to meditate, the instruction was to simply pay attention to my breath. Okay, so I've underlined all of the content words and then I just continue as long as I feel like it, maybe 10 minutes. And when I'm done, when I finish the whole page, I can check it with the listening, with the actual listening. So what this does, it awakens my awareness of the rhythm of the language and intonation. This is really important to your listening skills because we don't speak like robots. We don't accentuate every single syllable in the same way. And once you start being aware of this, you'll also start being aware of how English speakers pronounce each and every word. So this is perfect way to activate your English, okay? To activate your pronunciation and your listening skills. Good. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about a few learning resources I've prepared for you. Okay. So here we go. And like I said, if you want to boost your listening skills, please commit to 10 to 20 minutes a day. You'll see a big, big difference in improvement. Okay, and then tell me how it goes because I'm really curious. And I'm also curious, if I forget to ask you later, to tell me which of these resources you took advantage of and which of them you actually used and tell me how it went, okay? Okay, so here we go. The first thing I made for you is a compilation, two compilations of lyric videos. One is intermediate for intermediate learners and the other one is for advanced learners. If you don't know what a lyric video is, these are simply music videos. So I've taken music videos from different genres. They're all on YouTube. And what happens is the lyrics appear on the screen while the music is sung. So this way you can listen to music while seeing 
the words that are in the song. And you can check out for yourself if you're more intermediate or advanced. There are some intermediate songs that are maybe okay for beginners, so you can try it out. And again, you don't have to look up every single word because a lot of learning English is hearing the same word over and over and over again. And if you don't know it in the first context, eventually after hearing it five, six, seven times, you'll understand the meaning of the word. So it's also important to sometimes let things go. Not every single word in English is important to you now where you are as a learner. Okay, so again, this is passively listening, right? How can you activate, how can you activate this exercise? Okay, so to practice these songs, if you find one that you like, I want you to go to YouTube, go to the search and write the name of the song plus karaoke. Then you'll get the song but the singer is not singing. Instead, I want you to sing. And the words appear so you know which words to sing and you can try to imitate your favorite singer or musician. Record yourself if you dare and send it to me. <laughs> Post it on YouTube. Okay, so I want you to do that. Okay, like I said before, I do have podcast recommendations here on YouTube. I'll also put them in the show notes, but I've made a new Padlet. A Padlet is just um, a website where I, I've placed all of my recommendations of podcasts, and I'll be adding to that um, again and again. So I have podcasts for learners that are specifically for English learners, and there you can find something for your level. They have intermediate, beginner, advanced, upper intermediate courses, listening activities with tape scripts on BBC, for example. Um, just go check those out. And I also have quite a few podcasts that are not for English learners, but they're suitable for English learners if you're more advanced. Um, podcasts on current events, on common interest, science, everything okay interview shows you name it so i put them there and if you have a podcast that's not on my padlet then let me know and i can add it if you think it's good for learners i like it to be like a community where you can help each other okay so i mentioned ted talks before that's where i got my lovely script so TED Talks are basically speeches people make. They're invited to speak on topics when they're good speakers. And um, the nice thing about TED Talks, well, one, they're super interesting. They're always on an interesting topic. There's something for everyone there. And they come with transcripts. Sometimes they have transcripts in several languages. Almost always they have them in English. Um, so you can go to the website. It will be in the show notes as soon as I finish this episode. Then I'll go and put all the links there. They're not all there yet. Um, that's TEDx. So TED Talks, you can do that with. There are different lengths. Some are 10 minutes, some are 20 minutes, some are longer. And TED Ed is an educational side of TED Talks. They are animated and they're always shorter than five minutes. So that's really nice. I use those in my classes, for example, to watch a short clip on a specific topic. They have everything from history, psychology, sociology, all kinds of topics, it's very educational, animated. And um, I just have my students watch them come back and then summarize what they learned. So this is also activating your English. If you have the opportunity to listen and then to immediately summarize and speak about what you understood from the listening, first of all, it's good for your memory because it forces you to retain the information. And it also helps you to, um, to with the pronunciation, to repeat the words and to produce the sounds the way that they were heard. If it's fresh, then, then it's the perfect way to practice. So you can either just talk to yourself or you can record yourself speaking into your phone. It's also good for your pronunciation awareness 
to listen to yourself speaking. I know it's strange because when everyone, when they hear themselves speaking, they think, oh my God, do I sound like that? It's horrible. But if you get used to it, I promise it will really help your confidence and just having an awareness of how you pronounce words will really help you with your pronunciation and your listening skills as well. Okay, don't forget to mark the sentence stress. Yeah, this, ac this um, exercise I showed you, extra credit for word stress. So you can also pay attention to how the words are stressed in the sentences. You can also sign up for a chat partner on one of my Quizlets I made. This is for learners who would like to find someone to chat with. You can sign up under your level from beginner to advanced. Just put your name, maybe your mother tongue, and any details to contact you, like WhatsApp or Facebook or, I don't know, Skype, Skype or something. And if you're a serious learner, maybe you want to find a partner who's the same level as you. If you feel frustrated speaking to native speakers or people who are much more advanced than you in English, try, try to have contact with people your level because it's really important that you're challenged, but you're not overwhelmed. It's not good for you to always feel like you're like you're inferior in your language skills. Okay, it's the same with all of these activities. You should feel comfortable. It should be a joy. It shouldn't be painful to learn another language. It should be fun. If it's fun, it doesn't mean it's too easy. It means you know you're getting exposed to the language and it's always positive. Okay, so, and then lastly, I thought I'd throw this one in too, although it's not a very creative idea, is to use an exam website like IELTS. IELTS is an exam of the British Council, I believe, but um, the official site, they're very stingy. If you want to practice your listening there, they let you practice a listening, but you're supposed to pay for the answers. So. Um, I don't recommend the official site for that, um, but there are there is one site I found who, where you can practice at the IELTS exam structure and the listening activities, and they give you the correct answer right away. So you can you can know your level and you can practice that way. Okay, all links are in the show notes. So that's all I have to say there for the resources. If I left anything out that you enjoy doing, please let us know and I'll incorporate that into one of my future lessons. Okay, so now I have viewer questions. Okay. So one of the questions I received is, what accent should I choose? This is a very interesting question. So if you're in a position where you are able to choose which accent you, you have, British or American or Australian, then you're in a very good position because normally we don't choose our accent, our accent chooses us. This depends on what accent you've been exposed to. You can make an effort to follow a specific accent. I know that there are language schools and course book, the course book industry likes to promote this idea of an ideal English, like you have to learn British English or learn standard American English. Um, that's a little bit outdated in my opinion. I would never say that one accent is superior to another accent. I like all English accents. And by the way, there are many more non-native English speakers than there are native speakers. So any, any, any kind of book or program you choose to follow will be good English. If they've made a course book, it will be good English and good pronunciation. And um, yeah, and this is just a matter of taste, really. If there's one accent that you find nice to listen to or an accent that maybe doesn't appeal to you too much because of the vowel sounds, then that's completely up to you. But I promise you that in every nationality, there are people who speak clearly and there are people who speak really in a way that you don't understand anything. So it depends more on who you're speaking to than maybe the, the, the regional accent. 
how, by the way, how can you deal with people you don't understand? So if, if you have to repeat yourself and say, excuse me, what, excuse me, I know how it is. I'm also a language learner. I learned German. And I know that after you ask someone five times to repeat themselves, you just give up and say, okay, oh yeah, I understand. But I think it's good to point out that it's not just you, it's also their pronunciation. So you could just say, would you mind enunciating? You don't have to criticize the accent, but just say, oh, um, I'm more familiar with written English. Could you mind, would you mind enunciating? There's nothing offensive about that. Or could you speak a little more clearly? I do, I'm not used to spoken English. That sounds very friendly, it's fine. Okay, another question I received. Why don't I understand native speakers? Okay, we went over this. So it's the intonation, it's the weak stressed words that get swallowed, the contractions, the reductions. And another reason is unfortunately, a lot of English speakers have not had to learn a second language. So it's hard for them to empathize with the situation that your English isn't fluent. So, you know, if they've never spoken the language as a second language, they don't understand this. And they think, well, either you speak English or you don't. They don't understand that it's a gradual process and you may be somewhere, you know, on the way to being fluent, but it's difficult to understand people when they speak. So this is a big reason. And I think it's important to make, make the speaker aware if you're having difficulty understanding their accent. Okay, how can I learn English fast? This is a really hard question to answer without knowing you because I think everyone has a different learning style. Some people are good at memorizing lists. A lot of people can't learn that way. They have to be doing to learn. So I wouldn't overdo it. If you feel like you have to learn English in a very short amount of time, just remember, don't get overwhelmed. Don't set the bar too high. So if your English is here, set the bar here. Don't set the bar here. That's too high. Take it day by day and practice all parts of, of the language. Practice 10 minutes of listening, 10 minutes of reading, 10 minutes of writing, and most importantly is probably the speaking. Okay, so if you have to learn English fast, the most effective way is probably one-on-one -on -one with another English speaker or a teacher to correct your writing. That's also very effective. Um, but it, it depends on you really. So let me see if you have any questions I can answer. Mm. Let me see. Okay. The audio is low. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, um, no more questions. How can I improve my vocabulary? Thank you, Ali, I'll call you Ali. I think that's your first name. So how can I improve my vocabulary? Ali, like I was saying before, don't overwhelm yourself. If you are watching a TV program or something, don't write, don't, if you have to write down more than 20 words, it's too difficult. Just find something that's your level and then write down five, maybe five to 10 words per day to learn, write them in, in, in a notebook. There are apps you can learn, use to learn vocabulary, but the best way to learn vocabulary is in context. So instead of memorizing lists of vocabulary, you can read maybe read a graded reader, a, a book that's right for your level. And if you have three or four words per page that are new to you, that's fine. You can also let a few of those words go. You don't have to understand everything. If you understand 80%, like I said, it's fine. Um, but this is just keep at it. Vocabulary, just keep listening, keep reading. It's the, it's the best way to go about it. Don't give up, okay? Okay, YouTube videos. Okay, let's see. Yeah, watching YouTube videos and talking with foreigners in English on Clubhouse. Yeah, that's perfect. So I hadn't thought of that one. 
but YouTube, there's so there's a wealth of educational videos on YouTube. As you know, there are English lessons. You can search any topic and you'll find a, a good quality lesson. Um, but like, I like your idea of Clubhouse. I haven't, I don't know what that is. I, I've, I've never been on it. I imagine it's something like, um, yeah, something, an app or like WhatsApp or something. Um, but yeah, speaking to foreigners in English is perfect. Speaking to native speakers, if you have the chance, is also fine. Good ideas. Okay, so I'm going to let you go now if there are no other questions. And um, oh, here's another one, last slide. Okay, how can I improve intonation in words and perfect stress in sentence while speaking? Okay, Anshul, thank you for your excellent question. So I did give you an exercise to practice while listening, but you're you're right. How are you supposed to do this while you're speaking? And I would say um, when you summarize, okay, when you summarize into your recording, if you listen to something and then you want to summarize it, try to use the correct pronunciation and intonation. And then afterwards, listen to it and check if it was more, maybe think about whether it's the content words or, or not. And if you're in spontaneous conversation, um, this may not become automatic right now. You will practice on your own for a few weeks. And then I promise you in spontaneous conversation, it will just come. It will just come. Okay, you don't have to pay extra attention to it. I know you have to think about the grammar and the vocabulary and the overall pronunciation, but the exercise I showed you will definitely help you in becoming aware of the intonation. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do with you today. Good, thanks everyone for joining. I'm going to look here. I'm a little bit confused because I don't see the comments. I see a chat and it's all new to me, but I'm so happy. Hi, Danita. Um, I'm so happy to have met you and spent time with you today. And I'll be leaving this on YouTube as a replay and Give me your ideas for the next live and I'll make a new one, okay? I'll prepare that for you and I'll keep in mind the different time zones. So let me know where you are and what time zone would be good for you so that I can plan the right time in the future. Okay, everybody, take care. See you next time.